Welcome to you, Yang Yang, and it's a pleasure to have you here at the Canadian Residence. This piece here is special to me because um, I like to remind Canadians and Chinese friends of our special relationship. So we have a Bai Chiu En, and getting his inspiration from uh, Chinese farmers when he sees them with their baskets. Mm -hmm. And then he uses that inspiration to build his mobile hospital. So the idea comes from how the farmers carry their, uh, their products, and I, I like that very much. And then for Canadians, a couple of views of the Great Wall. This is an antique. My wife and I like to collect old uh, prints from old newspapers. So this is more than 100 years old from a German newspaper showing scenes of the Great Wall. And then this is a, another uh, picture of the Great Wall given to me by students at the Foreign Studies University. Yeah, so lots of special things to, to think about here. Well, when you compare the seven kinds of tea, which one do you want? Um, which, do you have a recommendation? Uh, this is a special one, called the Te Ji Su Pu. A very nice color, yeah. A very rich color. With the tea in it, and then this is Pi Ming Bei. Yes, yes. Do you want to try Yes, thing? sure. Oh, very nice. It's very, very nice. And I will prepare the seven kinds of poor tea. So I will to compare with the first one, it's called Te Ji Pu. Oh, thank you, the special the kind special. of, yeah. yeah. Okay, our tea is ready. Oh, thank you. Can you compare you. these two uh, kinds, yes. different colors? This one is just a little bit darker, yeah. yeah. And which one is the uh, Shoji, the special? This, this okay. One. Mm. This is a little, it, even though the color was darker, it feels a little lighter. Hello, dear audience, I'm Yang Yang. Today, we are at the residence of the Canadian ambassador to China, Mr. David Muruni, or Ma Da Wei. Welcome. Welcome to you, Yang Yang, and it's a pleasure to have you here at the Canadian residence. I'm so happy to have you in our tea house program. Today, Da Wei will talk about uh, his favorite cultural Chinese cities with us. I, I'd be delighted to do that. And I've been looking forward to this opportunity and to, to share with, uh, with you in such a wonderful program that introduces um, foreign friends to China and China to foreign friends. Uh, I've had the chance to uh, spend about 25 years in China off and on. I first came to China uh, to work in the Consulate General in Shanghai in 1986. And uh, at that time, uh, of course, China was a different place 25 years ago. And uh, Shanghai itself was a very different place. Uh, the Pudong area had not yet been developed. Um, many of the buildings uh, downtown in Puxi had not gone up. Uh, and so it, in many ways, it seemed a smaller city. Mm -hmm. But I liked it very much. I, I liked the, uh, the Bund, the area by uh, Zhongshan Lu, by the uh, Huangpu River. And I especially liked uh, Shanghai food. So I would like to go to some of the restaurants downtown, including in the Peace Hotel for Shanghai food. Now when I see Shanghai, I, I barely recognize it, uh, but I'm very, very impressed. What are the greatest changes in your eyes of the country? 
The great changes, I think, are in architecture and also in uh, transportation. So uh, in those days, I traveled all around my consular territory in Zhejiang and Jiangxi and uh, in uh, Jiangsu uh, by a train. And now, of course, I do most of my travel by, uh, by airplane. One thing that hasn't changed, though, is I think the people of China uh, are as hospitable and welcoming now as they were then. And that's one of the things I really like about China. People welcome you. They uh, are happy to see foreigners, and they're happy to share their culture with foreigners. When I have the opportunity through work or just in my spare time with my wife, we love to go out and see other parts of China. Uh, we like to discover Beijing, uh, to see the temples, to see the historical sites uh, in and around Beijing, but I especially like to go even further afield. The places that really interest me are in the West, uh, and Dunhuang mm -hmm. stands out as something very, very special. Uh, last summer, we had the chance with, when our son visited to go to Dunhuang and to see the magnificent caves with their, uh, their grottos, their frescoes, their paintings of Buddha and scenes of Buddhist life from more than a thousand years ago. To me, this was a remarkable, uh, rem remarkable highlight of my time in China. I also very much uh, enjoy uh, the, uh, this, this winter we got to Chufu, the, the, the home of uh, uh, Kongzi, Confucius. Mm -hmm. And so we saw the Confucius temple, we saw the, the mansion of the Confucius clan, and we saw the park where Confucius and his many, many descendants are, are buried. And to me, that was uh, also very special. Mm -hmm. And on that same trip, uh, my wife and I climbed Taishan. Mm -hmm. And standing on top of Taishan, looking at uh, the, 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 the plain, the, the, the land around us, uh, as uh, the sun was breaking through the clouds, was a really, really wonderful experience. How many Chinese cities have you ever been to? Have you counted? Oh, I think I've been to maybe uh, 30 or 40 Chinese cities. Yeah. Can you name several of your favorite ones? I like uh, Chengdu very much. I like Suzhou uh, very much. I like Guilin uh, a lot. I like Harbin a lot. So I like uh, many, many different kinds of, uh, of Chinese cities in different places. Uh, and because China is so big and so diverse, every city is, is very different. What I like most about uh, Chengdu is I like the fact that it's a very green city. And I also really enjoy uh, Sichuan culture and seeing restaurants, tea houses, uh, and uh, various buildings and temples. I, I, I really find it a very enjoyable city to be in. So speaking of tea, uh, what is your favorite tea? Well, um, today you very kindly made me some uh, Pu'er tea. And I, I, I'm really enjoying it, particularly the way you're serving it. I'm appreciating it much more because I think the way you're, you're presenting it brings out the, the, the flavor of the tea. Maybe now please enjoy a cup of oh, tea. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So what do you think the qualities a city should have so that it, it can be considered as a cultural city? Uh, I think, uh, first of all, it should have uh, great institutions, museums, and art galleries. Uh, and Beijing certainly qualifies uh, uh, great architecture. And I think it also has to have uh, living space for people, so parks, cafes, places where people can stop and talk and enjoy what they've seen. So it should be um, uh, a very people-friendly city, and I think China cities are very much like that. You can walk around, you can go and stop and have a meal or, or uh, go to a cafe, you can go to a, uh, a gallery. It's also nice to see modern culture, modern music. Here, uh, sometimes on the weekend, we'll walk up to San Li Tun uh, to have a, have a look around and see what's going on, or maybe take a cab to uh, Qizhou Ba to see some of the new galleries and things like that. So we, we very much enjoy the uh, the very uh, active cultural scene and cultural life in, in Beijing. What's your favorite city? And uh, not counting Beijing and Shanghai, because I've lived in both places. I really like them. Um, I love Dunhuang 
because of the ancient culture. I love Xi'an because of the ancient culture. And I like uh, Chengdu because of both ancient and modern culture and because of its green setting. So those would be, my, I think, my three favorite cities. Dunhuang, Xi'an, Chengdu. Please show us some, your photo collections sure. of that. Sure, yes, I'd be happy to. <laughs> this is a photo of my daughter. Um, she was out visiting recently, and we took a cable car up to the Great Wall at Badaling. And this is a photo uh, at, in Dunhuang, looking at the, the big, the singing sands, the, the, the big sand mountains uh, last summer. And it was a beautiful, warm evening. A temple in uh, Xining, in uh, uh, Qinghai province, uh, and I visited with my son to see this, this temple. So that, my son just graduated, so I was just back for his graduation. And uh, this is Jiayuguan, uh, at the very end of the Great Wall. My wife and I climbed a long way up to this tower overlooking uh, the, the last part of the wall. This is a trip we made just outside of Beijing to the Qing tombs. Uh, they're not as visited as the Shosanling. Uh, and I found it very interesting because I, I am very interested in uh, Qianlong. So his tomb is here. And the tomb, I think, of Tzu Xi is also here in this place. So historically, I found it very, very interesting. But it was also very quiet, and there weren't many people. So it had a very special feeling. <laughs> this is, I'm very happy because we've just finished climbing uh, up on Taishan. And it was a beautiful winter day, so it took my wife and me about five hours. We took a slow, leisurely climb, but we really, really enjoyed it. And uh, I loved seeing the Taoist temples mm -hmm. on the way up, and also seeing uh, people going up and coming down and chatting with people as, as we went. I, I really liked that. Oh, uh, we have uh, at uh, New Year, Chunjie, uh, we have a a temple fair here in the embassy and so we every, all across the embassy we have food we have performances um, we have different things going on and now there's a story yes so this, this um, uh, young man made um, some special uh, designs out of uh, sugar mm -hmm. uh, and this is one that combines uh, my birth sign uh, ma horse and my wife's and she's a, a snake but he, he wove the snake around the horse so that my wife says, that's, that's her hanging on to me. I said, that's a good, that's a good symbol. This was um, on October 1st, 2009, 60th anniversary of uh, People's Republic of China. We uh, watched the parade. We saw all the cultural performances. It was just a wonderful, wonderful day. Um, and this is just on the streets in Kashgar, just having a look at the old city. Uh, and uh, I really wanted to see uh, the mountains. Uh, so this is uh, Karakul, the lake in the, near the Pamir Range. I was very interested in that because I spent two years working on Afghanistan. And Afghanistan is just over, over the mountains from here. So I f it reminded me of my time in Afghanistan. We were talking about hockey. This is a, a, a local hockey team that plays in the, west, the eastern part of Beijing. So I was there to uh, watch their game and encourage them because we love to see mm -hmm. cooperation in hockey between Canada and China. Mm -hmm. And then this is a trip my wife and I made to Harbin mm -hmm. uh, in uh, January. Mm -hmm. So even though I'm a Canadian, I still think it was a little bit cold. But it was absolutely beautiful. So this is in the afternoon we went to see the snow sculptures and they were just beautiful and so extensive. I was really, really impressed. And then in the evening we went to the ice castle. And uh, right after that, we went into a little cafe and took our boots off and put our feet against the, the warm fire to, to warm up. But it was uh, really wonderful. Mm -hmm. And then here we go back to Canada. So this is um, uh, December of uh, 2008. And I'm in the city of Quebec, Quebec City. This is the St. Lawrence River, all frozen. And we have an icebreaker that makes a a path across the river mm -hmm. so that uh, the, the ferries can go back and forth. But Quebec is a very old city in Canadian terms, about 400 years old. And the people in Quebec speak French. Speak French. Oh. Can you speak French? Uh, je, je peux parler français, mais uh, d'habitude je parle anglais. Je parle moi français. Oh, votre français est formidable. Ah. Uh, je viens de Dalian. Ah. Dalian est une belle ville. 
Oui, 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 oui. oui. Bienvenue à Dahlia. Merci beaucoup. J'espère avoir l'occasion de visiter. Où est-ce que vous avez euh, étudié le, le français? À Dahlia. À Dahlia. OK. Oh, wow. That's, that's wonderful. Um, oh, and this is, this is a, an addition to my family that I made in China. This is my dog, Sherpa. Ah. And uh, I'll bring him out to say hello a little bit later on. So okay, he's... Uh, He's uh, just learning English because he, I think he started out speaking Chinese first. It's tea time. Oh, okay. Let's have another cup of sure, tea. Sure, let's do that. Thank you. I'm really enjoying this. What's your favorite Canadian cities you want to introduce to Chinese audience? Well, I think most uh, Chinese friends know Vancouver quite well, and I like Vancouver very much. Uh, but it's also interesting to come a little bit further east. So uh, Toronto, my hometown, uh, is special to me. Ottawa, where I've spent most of my working life, is a, a beautiful city uh, built on a river um, with the Canadian government and parliament uh, headquarters with Quebec province just across the river, also very beautiful. Montreal is uh, culturally very interesting. Uh, right now, the, the very famous group Arcade Fire is from Montreal. So it's a, a, a home of a lot of Canadian culture, great restaurants, and um, lots of uh, business activity with China. And for visitors who will visit Canada for the first time, and which is the first city you recommend? And uh, are there any special tips? Sure. Well, visitors coming from China um, normally go first to Vancouver or Toronto because we have now uh, lots of direct flights on Air Canada, on Air China, on China Southern, on Hainan Air to those two cities. And I, I really recommend visiting both. Once you go to see both, you should get out and see other parts of the region. So if you go to Vancouver, you should definitely cross uh, over to Victoria, which is on Vancouver Island. If you go to Toronto, you should visit Niagara Falls, which is not too far away, or Ottawa or Montreal. So uh, it's good to go to one place and then visit the region around it. That would be my advice. And what are your suggestions to Canadian visitors who want to come to China? Canadian visitors who come to China um, must see Beijing. Uh, re highly recommend Shanghai and then recommend one other, trying to do one other place. So I had relatives in who, who went to Xi'an mm -hmm. and also they went into the far west and then also came out by a, uh, by a Shanghai. Uh, so uh, try to see the two uh, principal cities but one or two historical things beyond those cities. Okay, thank you very much for joining our program, Mr. It's Ambassador. My pleasure. And thank you so much for introducing such a wonderful tea. I, I really enjoyed chatting with you, drinking tea, relaxing, just like you said. What are your hopes to our Tea House program? Well, I, I feel honored to be included in the number of ambassadors you, you've met, and I really encourage you to keep um, introducing ambassadors to China through your program. I, I think you're a good ambassador for China. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Dawei, for joining our Tea House program. I hope that you can invite more ambassadors to come to our Tea House program. Also hope that you can introduce more Canadian people to visit China to know about the fascinating Chinese cities. Well, thank you very much, and thank you for, for welcoming me and, and introducing such a relaxing tradition as the preparation and, and drinking of this wonderful Pua Tea. Um, my hope is that your program will go from strength to strength and I will certainly encourage my fellow ambassadors to be part of it because it's a great opportunity for us. I also really support your work in the ranking of Chinese cultural cities because it's enormously helpful and educational for foreigners to learn about the many, many cities and all that they have to offer to foreigners. So I'm going to be watching that very carefully and encouraging my Canadian friends to watch, to listen and to learn. Thank you very, very much. Okay, thank you. 我我特别荣幸有机会跟你讲话，喝茶，我也我我想你你呃。
介绍呃中国和中国文化，我觉得是特别有意思，所以非常高兴。